How is it going, Chooms? It is your boy, Azori, here back with another video, and in this video, we are back on Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. We're going to be continuing on the Fate episodes. We just finished Catalina, so we're going to go ahead and start Rackums. So, let's start it up. Piloting an airship ain't easy work, but whether it's plotting a windward course or conducting some routine maintenance, you can always count on experience and intuition. Ha! Just a little further! Finally, the Grand Cipher broke through the nebulous shadows and turbulent winds of the Grim Basin, and to greet us on the other end was our reward, a brilliant clear blue. It was a panoramic azure, dappled by silver-white clouds and gleaming from the light of a new day. Always an exhilarating sight to behold. Judging by the cries of celebration starting to spread across the deck, I took it my crewmates would agree. Damn, who'd have ever thought a young dreamer from Port Breeze would make it all the way out to these skies? The Grand Cypher and I, we'd gone through thick and thin together. It's a long story, but it all started on that fateful day I met the captain. I haven't looked back since. Right then, landing maintenance. Fuel stores, full. Engine, all clear. We were ready to disembark into the unknown. What awaited us in the Zeca Grande Skydom? As uneasy as I was, I couldn't help but feel a teensy bit giddy with excitement. Ah, the Grand Cipher. Ever since I found her abandoned behind a cliff, it was love at first sight. I was just a kid, but I had lofty dreams of repairing that ramshackle airship and taking her to the skies. Back then, I didn't know the difference between a porthole and port side, but I was determined. I dove into books bigger than my head, and I learned basic airship repair, helmsmanship, the whole kit and caboodle. After a ton of elbow grease, the day had come. The Grand Cipher was finally ready for a test flight. I still remember how my hands trembled as I grabbed the rudder. And wouldn't you know it, she actually lifted off the ground for me. Nothing quite like watching your first love take to the skies, is there? But before I could take it all in, my dreams came crashing down. I mean, literally. The Grand Cipher sunk like a damn meteor. A hundred different things could have caused it, but that didn't matter. Years of work went kaput in the blink of an eye. Betrayed by the very skies I longed for, I was crushed. Looking back now, it sounds stupid, I know, but it really felt like I had nothing to live for. I put all my hopes into that hunk of scrap. Laugh if you want, but some pits are too deep to crawl out of. Especially when you look up for freedom, and all you see is the expansive crystal blue of your tormentor. Don't worry, my pity party wouldn't last for too much longer. You see, my dreams had crashed like a meteor. But ironically enough, it was the meteoric rise of the Earth Day Empire that would bring the captain into my life. Salvation was on the horizon. Just as I'd given up on flying, the Earth Day Empire had arrived in Port Breeze, and they were hell-bent on exploiting our local protector, the primal beast of wind, Tiamat. 
Their twisted machinations caused her to go on a rampage. Port Breeze was in peril. Fortunately, we had an ace up our sleeve. Lyria. Thing is, Lyria needed to get close to Tiamat, which meant we had to go up. And to go up, we needed to fly. Thought I'd already closed that chapter of my life when the skies betrayed me, but lives were on the line. Quick, get on the Grand Cypher! I don't know what got into me. She fell once before. Hell, I knew she might fall again. Nothing like a healthy fear of death to keep you grounded, eh? But the people of Port Breeze and my new crewmates had entrusted their fates to my piloting skills. My own fear was insignificant. All I needed to do was trust myself, too. It's a damn shame it took me this long. But I'm back now, and ready to face the skies if you'll have me. As the Grand Cypher's engine purred to life, I knew I would no longer be encumbered by fear. I gripped the mask with pride as I set our course directly above to the rampaging Tiamat. Lyria quelled the primal beast, and catastrophe had been averted. Not to mention, I could finally dream again. Ever since that day, I've been the helmsman for the Grand Cypher and its crew. And it's been one hell of a ride. I've since formed a pact with good old Tiamat, and made amends with the shipwright primal who built the Grand Cypher, Noah. So, Zega Grande Skydom might be uncharted territory, but my role remains the same. See our crew arrive safely, no matter the destination. And that includes Estelusia. Some folks might call reaching the end of the skies an impossible dream, but I ain't too worried. With the Grand Cypher as our wings, anything's possible. Call it a side effect of being a helmsman, but my ears tend to laser in on any talk of airships. Then again, damn near anybody could have heard this guy shouting. No! No! Y you can't do this! She's still skyworthy! She can still fly! A distraught man was making a scene outside. Three seemingly unfazed onlookers surrounded him. Between all the belly aching, I pieced together the man's story. He was an engineer was upset that an airship called the Nautilus was set to be decommissioned. His three friends, meanwhile, were telling him to see reason that an old ship like that would be more useful as scrap. Reminded me of the Port Breeze days, back when my own dreams seemed like unscalable walls. The three onlookers were a young helmsman, a young mechanic, and an older merchant. They presented a unified front against the engineer, countering each of his arguments threefold whenever he opened his mouth to protest. As much as I wanted to help the guy, the trio were speaking the truth. Repairing the damn thing would cost buckets of rupees, and you can't fix an airship on gumption alone. Trust me, I've tried. Them's the brakes, kid. I turned to leave. None of my business, right? But dumb old me, I had to pause as my ears caught what he said next. We made a pact, didn't we? Don't you remember? The Nautilus. You promised that we would take her to the skies. He could barely hold it together. He could hear it in his voice, the desperation as he clung to a quickly fading dream. It was a feeling all too familiar to me. Well, we're back, once again, uh, so, playing as Rackham this time, uh, don't exactly know how this is gonna go, but yeah, alright, let's start.
means short. The Nautilus may be old, but she's got plenty of potential. She could easily outpace any other cargo ship in the fleet. At least three times faster! Found the poor bastard blathering his woes at a tavern in Folka. The seat next to his happened to be conveniently open, so I took it. Without so much as asking my name, he launched into story after story. It was clear he still needed to vent. Apparently, he just recently started his career as an engineer, planned on restoring the Nautilus. It would revitalize the local economy, help Folka this, assist Tim Peel that. He went on and on, but I knew he wasn't going to feel better until he confronted the actual issue at hand. Don't get me wrong, I think it's great you want to help your home like this, but that's not the real reason you're upset, is it? That obvious, huh? I, uh, made a promise to my friends. One day we'd fly our beloved Nautilus across the skies together. But the ship in question was long past its heyday and had deteriorated beyond the point of conventional repair. Time is a cruel but patient mistress. And among the original Nautilites, only Kent had yet to accept reality. After he finished his explanation, silence fell between us. Well, until another man frantically stumbled into the tavern. I'd seen him somewhere before. Oh yeah, one of the naysayers from earlier, the merchant. Somebody help! Anybody! Monsters are ransacking my precious cargo! I was torn. Do my civil duty as a skyfarer and save the cargo, or help this ass determined to crush the dreams of my newfound friend. So, I asked Kent. What? Uh, of course you should help him. Not a moment's hesitation from the kid. I like that. This would have been the perfect moment to ensure the continued survival of the Nautilus, at least in the short term. But despite that, Kent didn't think twice about helping his fellow man. Hell yeah, Kent. I'll see what I can do. Damn. Now we're here. Take some R and R instead. I was about to say, I don't think I've ever played as Rackham before. Rackham is a man of the sky is tasked with helming the Grand Cipher. His two guns allow him to cover allies at both long and close range. Square to fire once, hold to fire through round burst, and triangle is chargeable. With increase, which increases its range and damage. Skills and score attacks fill the heat gauge, and triangle attacks charges faster the higher the heat gauge. Okay. According to the merchant, our destination should be around here. I just hope there's anything left to save. Let's get moving. Well, let's go. Goblins? What the hell are they doing here? You know me, being a loot goblin at heart. Okay. This gun actually didn't feel that bad, I'm not gonna lie. I was kinda expecting it to be worse. But actually, it's not that bad. Low key, <laughs> Raku might be OP now that I think about it. At least playing as him, because I know the CPU ain't gonna be playing him like he That's like he can be played. But uh, if I was to be playing as Rackham, Loki, he's feeling cold. Cargo safe and sound. Maybe. Looks like it's been rummaged through. Watch out, Rackham! We've got goblins and wyverns on our Things are about to get dicey. Just don't let him get close to the cargo. Don't let up! There's still more of them! Stay you sharp, everybody! Come on! Oh, yeah. You got this. Easy Bring it! 
So the big shot finally decided to show up, huh? Well, you're going down like a... Don't even have finish, Rackham. Don't even worry about it. You monsters we got it. screwed up big time today. Because you chose to mess with the best crew to ever cross these skies. Yeah, you did. <sighs> well, that's over with. Oh. oh, you're a lifesaver. How could I ever thank you? You want to thank someone, thank him. I gestured toward Kent, the man's face filled with shame as the irony dawned on him. So it was you, huh? Hey, uh, hey, listen. I'm sorry about earlier. I could have heard you out. After the merchant left, I wanted to focus on the next goal at hand. Putting some wind back in the Nautilus's sails. So I proceeded to do some intelligent and, dare I say, brilliant thinking on the topic when Kent asked what I was talking about. Whoops. Must have been thinking out loud again. You just wait and see. Yeah. Alright, so now we're on, I want to say it's episode 5 maybe? Yep. So, I'll see you at the next fight. How many times do I gotta say it? Getting parts to fix the Nautilus out here in the boonies is next to impossible. I've never been good with women. My words never come out quite the way I mean for them to. I thought maybe Miss Mechanic would be on board, but... Yeah, I probably shouldn't be doing this behind Kent's back anyway. I'm telling you, I've tried everything. Sure, I'd love to see her fly again, but it's time to... Get real. Right? Hey, come on. That was against the rules. How was I supposed to keep a stern attitude against that blubbering mess? When I finally got a word in edgewise, I let her know I already had the parts she needed. Picked them up here and there, across Fanta Grande and Nala Grande. Here, this what you need? I'll cut you a deal. Wait, how? Where in the skies did you find these? Caught up in her excitement, she leapt at me. Whoa, not so close, Missy. Of course, she paid me no regard. It was the parts she had her eyes on. Some modifications here and there, I could... Yeah. I can't believe it! The dream is alive! Yep, the dream was alive. She didn't have to say it. The look on her face was enough. All that hubbub from earlier was nowhere to be found. After forking over the payment, she happily took the spare parts off my hands. She also made sure to plant a big, fat kiss on my cheek before scurrying off. Jeez, at least warn a guy beforehand, right? Women, I swear. In any case, the winds were starting to blow back in their favor. Hey, Rackham's the man, I'm not even gonna lie. Rackham, there you are. I've got huge news. Listen to this. It was clear from Kent's smile that the repairs on the Nautilus were going smoothly, thanks to a mechanic friend of his. Well, ain't that something? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't impressed. Those parts weren't the easiest to work with. Not bad, Miss Mechanic. Um, Rackham, sir? My friend told me she got the parts from a traveling skyfarer. Had three-day-old scruff and a little swagger to him. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Huh. Well, I keep my scruff in an elegant chin strap. Thank you very much. Not sure I sounded very convincing trying to play off his answer, but I'm a helmsman, not an actor. 
<laughs> but just another performance or two, and the Nautilus would be skybound once more. The Nautilus is... Skyworthy? I wasn't sure which was greater. The Helmsman's confusion or Kent's enthusiasm. Yep. We've got one last bit of patching up to do, but she'll be ready before you know it. Isn't that exciting? Unexpectedly, the Helmsman's confusion shifted into something darker. I decided to pry. Yeah, we'll have you back at the helm in no time. Unless you're getting cold feet or something. Yep. Hit the nail on the head, the look in his eyes was unmistakable. He feared the skies. Despite his attempts to hide it, his fists were balled up and trembling. I knew the signs well enough. It wasn't my place to snoop further. From his perspective, I was just a busybody trying to dredge up a dream he'd long laid to rest. What could I do anyway? This was something he had to deal with himself. But hey, if I got through it, anyone could. So I did what I could. I put my hand on his shoulder and gave him a sympathetic nod. And I'm back. All right, starting the next mission. I'm sorry, I, I don't think I can do this. It was a bombshell no one wanted to hear, especially as the Nautilus's repairs were finally wrapping up. What are you talking about? This was our dream, wasn't it? What did you... I'm afraid, okay? A heavy silence permeated the room. It was uncanny how much of my former self I saw in him. Actually, uncanny's not the word. It was downright painful. See, to pilot an airship, you gotta make peace with the fear of flying. A close cousin of the fear of death. You? Afraid? Aren't you a trained helmsman? I knew exactly how he felt, but decided to play dumb. His response was so faint, I wasn't sure if he'd said anything at all. Turns out, he made a bad call during a practice flight and crashed his vessel. Barely escaped with his life. I don't want this dream to die, but my arms shake whenever I think of taking the wheel again. Poor kid, he hadn't figured it out yet, but I knew how to teach him. Real shame the Nautilus won't have a helmsman. Maybe I should take over, till you're feeling up to it. No. The Nautilus... The Nautilus is our ship. He took the bait. Fair enough. Then come with me for a ride on the Grand Cipher. If you've got the grit for it, I mean. It was a risky gamble, but I had a feeling Lady Luck was on my side that day. Well, another day, another dime. So, bro is driving the Grand Cipher. Incredible. He's actually he letting somebody... <laughs> it's on autopilot, <laughs> that's what it is. Why did Rackham bring us aboard? I'm not quite sure myself, actually, but it is kind of fun. Rackham! We've got company! No, no, no! I'm too young to die! Everybody take cover! I'll handle it! Come here, Dad! Bro, I think you're gonna die is crazy. We got this, don't even worry. There's some behind us? Stay calm. I won't let you get in harm's way. I promise. Oh, I can use this. Sweet. Great. Now we gotta do. 
deal with these pests too? Always expect the unexpected, because in the skies, life and death lie cheek by jowl. Expect the unexpected. Healthy as a horse. Okay. Okay. I guess I need to wait. What kind of? Yeah, so I don't really have to look at Great work. I can't believe he took down those wyverns. Skyfarers are a whole different breed, huh? Yeah, we are. Stay sharp! We've got more no wyverns coming our way! So the first horde was just recon, huh? Bring it! They'll go down all the same. I think I'm starting to get it, Rackham. Why it is that you fight. I mean, you want to take to the skies? Okay, so we're definitely going to help my partners. You truly believe in a dream. The risk of danger is a small price to pay. A dream, huh? I let fear get the best of me, and I guess I, I lost sight of what's important. That all? Okay, it's kind of hard to, like, decide where to hop on. And now it's actually easy. Oh, you're in for it. Watch this. Excellent collaboration. I guess so. I can't remember what that does. I think it's just a dog or whatever. That could be on. But that's that. All right. That's the last one. Now then, take a good look around you. Tell me that ain't a sky worth putting your life on the line for. Yeah, that's really something, huh? I never knew it could be this beautiful. Ha! How you guys feeling? Incredible! The skies are so vast! Wow! So that's what the town looks like from up high. What a relief. I was worried the monster attack had only made things worse for the would-be crew. But the gamble paid off. The helmsman's eyes lit up with newfound determination. The Nautilus will fly. And you can bet I'll be at the helm. The skies have a way of making us understand. I'm just glad this kid decided to listen. All right, I think this is the last two, I want to say. Yeah. Clear blue skies, gentle breeze. It was perfect conditions for the Nautilus's maiden voyage. As the helmsman gripped the wheel, I knew he was no longer shackled by fear. Kent, Panic, the Merchant, even Lyria, Burn, and some of our other crewmates. Actually, damn near the whole town showed up to witness the rebirth of an old friend. As the propellers began to churn, a metallic sputter sounded from somewhere below deck. It was a symphony of gears I'd heard time and time again. That mechanic, she'd done it. After a brief checkup, they started the countdown. The tension was palpable. Come on, Nautilus. All eyes were on the airship. No one dared to breathe. A wind whipped up around the Nautilus, and there it was. Liftoff. And once again, she sailed into those skies so blue. A few weeks had passed since the Nautilus took its maiden voyage. A 
According to Kent, the Nautilus was now Folka's leading cargo ship. Makes sense, given that it was three times faster than any other ship on the island. And not only that, but it seemed Kent had found himself a new dream already. Okay, picture this, Rackham. Three ships conjoined into one massive cruise liner. See, all we need to do is reconstruct these columns here and... <laughs> I wonder if I sounded that crazy to the others whenever I got my big ideas. Anyway, such a massive ship would require at least three helmsmen. So in his effort to make the cruise liner a reality, Kent started studying how to be a helmsman himself. But if Kent were to be the second pilot, who would be the third? About that, actually, uh, we'd be honored to have you as the lead helmsman of our ship. Uh, of course. It was a kind offer, but I already had a family in my crew and a home in the Grand Cipher. But that didn't mean I couldn't let the kid down easy. Sorry, Kent. This Skyfarer is not old enough to set anchor just yet. Until that day comes, you can find me wherever the wind blows. That has been the video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you guys are new, and I will see you tunes in the next video. This has been your boy, it's Sora, and I will see you tunes later. Peace out.